And good afternoon, everybody. I am Jason Mater, and we welcome you to a program that we call Commencement Live. So as you get ready for the top of the hour, 3 o'clock, over the next 60 minutes, we're going to bring you behind the scenes. And when I say behind the scenes, I literally mean behind McCamish Pavilion. Because take a look behind me. This is the Zelnak Center. This is where the practice basketball facility is. But for today and tomorrow, this is where your graduates line up and get ready to make that big march at 3 o'clock. And so they come in, and they find their name, and then they go over and they find their major. And then they stand in line, and just like you, sitting there and waiting, they stand and wait. But to fill that time over the next 60 minutes, we're going to give you a chance to learn a, a, a little bit more about some of the students who will walk across that stage, learn a little bit more about what goes on here at Georgia Tech. Basically, it's an opportunity for us to give you something to do as you get set for commencement. I will be joined by two other gentlemen, and one of them is Stephen Norris, who's right here. Stephen, you, you control the social media channels here at Georgia Tech. What type of stories can the people expect here on Commencement Live? Well, we're going to be meeting students from all of our colleges, all different types of majors. We're going to hear their stories about how they've worked hard to get to this point today. It's a really fun time for us to celebrate along with everybody who's here in Zelnek. Uh, just a really enjoyable time for us. All right, and so the third member of our team is actually amongst you, and we're going to kick it over to McCamish, where Bryce Zimmerman is setting the scene from right in front of you. Bryce? All right, thank you very much, Jason. While you are with soon to be very anxious hundreds of graduates of the Georgia Tech Master's Program, I am out here among the people at McCamish Pavilion. We'll be bringing you a couple of different perspectives from inside McCamish Pavilion. And right now I am standing on the stage that in about an hour from now, faculty and leadership administration will file onto this stage and look out onto a sea of some of the most bright young minds in the entire country. So I'll be giving you the look from inside here at McCamish Pavilion, and we'll send it back up to you guys for right now. And let's hear about some of those wonderful stories about this year's graduating class in the master's programs. All right, Bryce, thank you. We're back here in Zelnak, and as you can kind of see, a lot of activity back here. Uh, all of our students beginning to line up. Uh, we, th this is where we get everybody kind of organized and ready to cross the stage in about an hour or so. So what we want to do is start introducing you to some of the folks you'll be seeing a little bit later. First up, we're going to talk to Plum, and he is an International Affairs Master's graduate. Now that's a major, lo not a lot of folks are choosing. What did you study in particular in your program? The area that I focused in that's really at the intersection of science, technology, and international politics is energy. And so I found that fascinating uh, to study over the last two years. I took relevant courses to that uh, and learned a tremendous amount as just how much technology influences international affairs. And you grew up in Georgia, but your family has a kind of unique background. Right. I'm originally from Bulgaria, and I moved here when I was uh, very young. Uh, grown up in Georgia since then, and so uh, Georgia Tech was always uh, very close, and, and I knew that at some point I'd probably find myself here. And now you can say you've got a degree from Georgia Tech. What are you looking forward to most as your next step? Well, I'm going to D.C., so the, the plethora of opportunities that are there uh, are, are exciting, and um, just looking forward to the next step. All right, Plumman, headed to D.C., an international affairs graduate. We're going to let him get back in line. Congratulations. Now I'm going to Pull in uh, an aerospace uh, major, Lindy. One thing I want to, now I don't want you to mess up your hair, but oh, yeah. can we take a look at this yeah, awesome we can, cap? We can take it off, it's okay. Okay. I can fix it. So did you do this yourself? I did, it took me two nights to do it, a couple hours sitting in front of a television. So I see the Van Gogh inspiration here, but there's also something that will let us know what your major is, so, right? Yeah, I'm an aerospace engineering major. I'm also a dual degree, so I just finished my MBA also, but the space shuttle was essentially why I wanted to do aerospace. It was what inspired me to go into that field and so I wanted to somehow bring that in as well as my favorite painting which also has to do with the sky and the stars so it just felt like the right thing to do. So much symbolism there. It's actually no, aerospace engineer, MBA and artist. I mean that is an impressive mortarboard. I didn't know I had it in me but it came out right and it was perfect timing <laughs> to have some sort of artistic inspiration so. And, and another really cool thing about Lindy, we spent a little bit of time in her laboratory earlier this semester. You were working on a project that has major implications. Tell us a little bit about the research right. that you did. So I'm working on a small satellite, it's a CubeSat, it's a 6U that carries a camera. It's going to go into low Earth orbit, and it's hopefully going to track and monitor uh, orbital debris so we can get a better idea of what's going on in low Earth orbit, and we can better track and characterize the debris that's there. So it's still in progress. So all the undergrads and the other graduate students are going to be taking over. They're in good hands. They've had a lot of information, and they're going to do great. 
Anybody you want to say hello to over in McCamish? Yeah, my parents are in there. Hi, Mom and Dad. And my grandma, my mom, she made it. I'm happy to see her. So glad you guys could be here. Okay, a busy day for Lindy. We're going to let her go get in line. Congratulations. All right, no big deal. MBA uh, launching a satellite into space. We've got international affairs graduates headed to D.C. No big deal at all. Actually, we're going to continue to introduce you to more graduates. And we want, well, we want you to meet another person who's tied to the space industry. Let's meet Iana Jones. Europa is an icy moon of Jupiter. It is one of the Galilean moons that was discovered by Galileo Galilei. And it has been a moon of interest as we have discovered that Europa has a subsurface ocean. Not only a subsurface ocean, but a saline ocean. So Europa actually has more water than Earth has in all of its oceans, which makes it a prime candidate for discovering life and the potential for life. I get lots of questions about aliens. <laughs> Do I believe in aliens? I do think that it may have bacteria or um, microscopic microbes in its oceans that essentially could develop into um, complex animals. In the past, I have done volunteer work mentoring at elementary schools, um, mentoring students in the classroom. I even am a teaching assistant at Georgia Tech. I teach an, intro an introductory astronomy course, um, and I really enjoy that. Um, I really enjoy watching my students learn and um, really grasp material that I'm really passionate about. I think education is really important and I'm interested in dedicating my life to helping students learn. A lot of times I think when we think of a scientist, we think of someone who is not looking like me, um, but that's okay because I think that can change and I think that it should change and it will change as we uh, continue to provide opportunities for students of color um, and minority students to pursue these sciences. And here she is. Iana, I have a question. So if something is so far away and we might not ever step foot on it, why is it important for us to understand what's happening way out there? It's important for us to understand what's happening on astronomical time scales because as humans, it's important for us to push the boundaries of our understanding. And by us pushing the boundaries of our understanding, we push the boundaries and learn about ourselves as well. So ask me a question. Researcher in the future, professor in the future, or astronaut in the future? I say a little bit of all three if possible. <laughs> um, preferably a research as well as professorship, um, but I wouldn't mind being an astronaut as well. And you'll hang on here at Georgia Tech and pursue your doctoral degree? Yes, that's what I will do. <laughs> Anybody out there that's watching? Mom, Dad, thank you so much, and I'll see you after graduation. <laughs> Iana, congratulations, and thanks so much. All right, so that's Iana Jones. So Iana has, let's just say she's been here at Georgia Tech for a little while. But we're about to go over to Bryce to talk about some students who didn't spend any time whatsoever at Georgia Tech except for these last few days. Bryce, tell us a little bit about a computer science degree program. Thank you very much, Jason. The OMSCS program, that's Online Masters of Science for Computer Science program, is an online course, and it has picked up a lot of steam since its inception in January of 2014. In fact, over 6,000 have enrolled here at Georgia Tech remotely, representing 50 countries and Puerto Rico and 100 countries, excuse me, 50 states, let me get that correct, and Puerto Rico and 100 countries globally across the entire world. Now, as Jason alluded to, they're doing it remotely, so they don't always have the opportunity to come to Georgia Tech. Well, Tech and the College of Computing made it possible for OMSCS students to come to Georgia Tech and take a tour. Let's take a look at how that tour went yesterday. <laughs> Thank you. 
Cambridge Pavilion's floor with Tyson Bailey. And Tyson, you got to partake in that walk. It wasn't in slow motion, but you guys were walking around campus yesterday. What was it like to see Georgia Tech for the first time? It was utterly amazing. So uh, being away from the campus all of the time, uh, you get to be here and you just feel like you're a part of something bigger. It's amazing. When was that moment where you knew you were a part of the Georgia Tech community? When I got my buzz card. <laughs> That, that's one of the big things is, is when you're off campus, it's hard to believe you're really a student. And then you finally get here and you're like, they gave me an ID. This is amazing. I'm here. <laughs> and you're a unique OMS CS student because you did some video blogging to help other students that were going through the same experience. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I started a 60 Seconds to Success in OMS CS program. And so I just kind of try to throw little tips out there. A lot of times you get these you know, top tens and they take like 20 minutes to listen to. And I hate that. So I always wanted to give people fast tips that they can just act on and do something better. All right, Tyson, congratulations on walking today, and we look forward to seeing you in the commencement ceremony in just a few mo uh, moments. Thank you so much. All right, that's Tyson Bailey. We're going to now check in with another graduate student, and this one has got a taste for languages. Check him out, Nathan Fisher. Ever since I was really young, tech has always been my dream school, but I initially came here for aerospace engineering. About four and a half years ago in an intro to aerospace engineering class, I realized that this is not for me, and I decided to study international affairs. I speak French, Spanish, and Arabic um, to differing degrees, but the key to learning multiple languages is just to stay diligent and do a little bit each day, whether it's listening to a song, reading the news, and just making sure that you don't get out of practice with that language. So I've been at Georgia Tech for five years, and the first four years of that were pursuing my undergraduate degree. Uh, but due to the five-year BSMS program, I was able to stay one extra year and get a master's degree in international affairs. One of the highlights of my time at Georgia Tech was doing an internship at the U.S. Embassy in Quito, Ecuador. I worked in the political and economic sections and got to work on press freedom, human rights, counter drug trafficking. Um, every day was something different and it was an incredible experience. The great part about tech is that everybody is so passionate about what they study. And we're such a diverse community, but it's really encouraging to be around people who share, who are so passionate about what they study and what they want to accomplish in life. And Nathan joins us now. Nathan, five years, bachelor's and a master's degree. You gotta feel proud of yourself and what you've done. It's been a long ride here at Tech. It's been a, good, it's been a long five years, but it's been a good five years. You said you've been walking around and you've been seeing lots of faces, familiar faces around here in Zelna. It's been incredible seeing all my friends from even high school that came here and studied other majors. And it's so awesome to see all my friends prosper and following their dreams and graduating here today. Yeah, it's really cool to be back here. You've got uh, friends here, but you've also got some family you want to say hello to over in McCamish. Yes, I want to give a shout out to my parents and my sister who are here today. Uh, thank you for always pushing me to follow my dreams. I would definitely not be here without you guys. All right. And I, and you, I hear you also have a shout out for uh, someone who helped you get through some late nights. Yes, I want to give a shout out to Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, and Blue Donkey. Thank you for all the coffee for getting me through those late nights. I definitely would not have been able to complete some assignments without all that coffee and espresso. All right, Nathan, uh, international affairs graduate headed to DC. Congratulations. All right, we'll let him go get in line. Uh, lots, lots of cool stories. We're, we're meeting lots of students. J Jason, it's a fun day for us to uh, kind of see all these graduates, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's a, and it's also a big day for those who are watching. You know, just like he said, coffee wouldn't have gotten him through this. You know, the folks out there also get these through students here. So it's congratulations to kind of everybody. We're going to step out of the way and kind of show you again if you didn't join us right at the top of the hour. This is the Zelnak practice facility. This is where the basketball teams practice. But for today and tomorrow, about 3,200 degrees will be conferred. There are about 1,300 master's degrees that will be handed out. Now, don't get the wrong idea. There won't be 1,300 people actually walking across the stage in front of you in this ceremony that takes about two and a half hours. That's just how many people can receive a degree. Uh, the crowd is a little less than that. So this is actually only half of the folks who are, there, who are lined up to get ready to graduate. Back behind the camera actually is a freshman gym, an older gym, and that's where other folks are lining up to graduate. So let's continue with our stories. Michelle Ijaz is a city planning master's 
recipient. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. What, does, uh, what does one do with a city planning degree next? What are you going to do? Uh, so I'm from Lahore, Pakistan. Um, and my undergraduate was in architecture. So there we studied how a building isn't just a building in isolation, but how it impacts the city. So I came here to understand what those impacts are. And when I go back, I'm going to see how policy, law, transportation, environment, how all these factors actually work into you know, how people experience where they live and how to make that experience better. When you go back to Pakistan, are there a number of people with degrees from American universities, or are you kind of an outlier? There are. There are a good number of people, actually, even here in Georgia Tech, who are from Pakistan. There are a lot of other people as well uh, in city planning itself. So I have a good um, network there to you know, go to and talk to about this stuff. There's one question I have to ask you, and that's about, some people think that Georgia Tech is like an oasis in a city because we have so much green space and newer buildings. Do you look at campus a little bit different because of your city planning background? Yes, so uh, when I came here, I already identified my favorite buildings. So the so cloth, the interior, the way the lights are aligned, I love that. The exposed ceiling of architecture building, I am in love with it. The tech green, the way it's like a huge courtyard for all the buildings, it's amazing. So you do, of course, if you study architecture, there is, you look at things a certain different way, but it makes your experience so much nicer. And like, I love photographing those corners and seeing, you know, all these things that normally you wouldn't see unless you really zoom into it. All right, uh, who's watching you and you want to say hello? Oh, my dad's here from Dubai, so I want to say hi to him. Uh, and my uncle's here from San Francisco, so hello. Fantastic. San Francisco, that's funny because her name is Michelle and her parents actually watched the show Full House from Pakistan and that's how they gave you your name? Yeah, yeah they love that show. Uh, so I was about to be born. So they're like, you know, we love the character Michelle, so let's just name her after her. And here I am. And, and San Francisco is San where Francisco, Full House exactly. is? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Michelle, congratulations. All right, so she's off to Pakistan. All right, so uh, Commencement Live not only gives you an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the students, but as Michelle said, a place that is known for technology really does a lot of good things with architecture here on campus. And about five weeks ago, a new piece of artwork was unveiled on campus honoring the civil rights hero, Rosa Parks. Take a look. Ready? Ready, Ready to do it. All right. It's a particularly important piece for the Georgia Tech community because it reminds us of our past, but more importantly invites us to reflect on our future. Everything we still need to do in terms of civil rights uh, and looking for freedom and access to all. It's kind of, you know, refreshing to see this concept. I've never seen this type of concept before. Um, usually they say, oh, let's put the statue Rose Parks, but never just a continuing conversation to make people obviously think and want to hold future conversations or keep having conversations about uh, social change and any injustices and quality and whatnot. So those are all the things that Auntie Rosa worked so hard for her whole life. So um, I just feel completely completely in awe of it. I love it. Especially being president of the African American Student Union, that's one of my biggest things is make sure that black students have a voice on this campus. So sitting here and continuing that conversation will kind of be my time to talk to Rosa Parks, both the old and young, to kind of see maybe what her inputs would be to help the campus be better. All right, we're back here in Zelnak, introducing you to more folks you'll be seeing in just a little bit crossing the stage, earning their master's degree. I'm here with Laura Ferreira. Laura, really interesting journey to get your MBA. Your undergrad was in something totally unrelated to business. Hey, that's correct. I got my bachelor's in theater at UCLA. And so what made you want to kind of retool and say, I'm going to go into the business field? It's a mid-career pivot for me, um, wanting to just change and do something new, and um, and also just as a way of showing my family that when you want to do something for a really long time, that you should go do it no matter where you are in your life. It looks like she's well-loved, folks. <laughs> it looked like you also really thrived. We're looking at some of the photos uh, from your journey here at Tech. You really thrived in the program. Thank you. I have. Uh, Scheller community is really tight-knit. Um, it's a really warm group, and I've made some friends for life here. We also saw a couple photos of Laura's family, and not only are you inspiring, uh, you know, uh, your classmates, but hopefully your children as well. Uh, I'd like to think so. Like I said, I wanted them to know that it's never too late to pursue a dream. So hi, Sophie, Evan, Catherine. And side note, it's also not just graduation day, another very important day for you as well. It is indeed. Happy 21st anniversary, Ted.
All right, happy anniversary. Give uh, Laura a nice shout out when she crosses that stage. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, MBA graduate, we're gonna move on to another graduate. We're gonna talk to Hunter here. Hunter, you now have two engineering degrees from Georgia Tech. Tell me what you studied while you were here at, at Georgia Tech. So I finished my undergrad last uh, May, actually, about a year ago in material science engineering. And now I just finished uh, industrial engineering. So if it wasn't enough to get uh, that first engineering degree, I'm going to come back and get a exactly. master's engineering degree. What was the toughest part during your journey here? Uh, moving away from home, I guess. I mean, I'd always been a tech fan growing up. My parents came here, so tech was the school I wanted to go to. But moving away from home was a big uh, change. Obviously, going to college, you know, scheduling uh, homework, all that kind of stuff was a big change. Yeah, not to embarrass this guy, but you saw him in his Georgia Tech onesie there. So yeah, you've been yeah. a tech fan for a long time. I have, yes, I have. All right, so. Um, Graduating from the top industrial engineering program in the country, what are you, what's your next move? What are you going to be doing post-graduation? Yeah, so Tech helped me land my job that I wanted. I got a consulting job with Deloitte, and I start in September, so very excited to, to move on to that. Five years of school is enough for me, so I'm ready to move on. All right, congratulations to Hunter. Anybody you want to say hello to over in McCamish? Uh, family and girlfriend are up there, so hey. All right. Thank you. Nice shout out. Congratulations, Hunter. All right, so let's uh, check back in with Bryce. Uh, he's going to uh, maybe have a little bit of challenge for some folks who might have a little bit of dexterity that are waiting over there in McCamish. Bryce? Thank you very much, Stephen. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anybody that wanted to go after the Rubik's Cube. You know, sometimes going through graduate school can feel like a puzzle, a puzzle that needs solving. Well, we got lucky earlier this year. The inventor of the Rubik's Cube, Erno Rubik, actually made an appearance on campus and talked about a lot of different topics. He doesn't make a lot of public appearances. And out of the woodwork came, of course, tech students that can use and do the Rubik's Cube in record times. I'm going to get cracking on this while we take a look at some of those master cubers. I grew up with a cube in the house, and I accidentally solved two sides one time. And my mom was like, oh, if you got two sides, I'm sure I can get the rest of them. And it turned out she couldn't. My sister saw how sad I was afterwards. So she's like, oh, let me just peel off all the stickers. And I saw, after she had done that, I was like, there's got to be a better way to do this. There's got to be a right way. My best time is just under 12 seconds. Personally, as an engineer, I really like puzzles and figuring stuff out. So that might be one of the biggest draws is uh, trying to, that mindset, I guess. My PR is around 14 seconds, a little over that. I just build the white, and then you can kind of do like layer by layer, essentially. Once every piece is in the correct spot, and there's just a very simple like pattern that you can do. And you just keep doing that over and over again until the ye like the one yellow is in the right spot. When the PR and the, the, the fastest time in the world is around four seconds, the small things add up. So, but once you like do it enough, I guess your hands like get used to it, and then you can just like start using other fingers to make it move faster. Every time you do it, it's a little you know sense of accomplishment, I guess. And every time you beat your personal record or anything like that, it's just <coughs> fun to keep on working on getting faster. There you go. Oh, I can see why no one wanted to try this and why those guys are so good. I was only able to get five. Not very good for me. I'm going to throw this away. All right, let's send it back up to Jason. He's got some more great stories from Zelnak. All right, thank you, Bryce. Fortunately, we have two more graduation ceremonies tomorrow, so we can try it again there. Uh, talk about a little a different project that we have here at Georgia Tech. This summer, a team of students will go to the Oregon Trail, you know, the thing that has the video game. They'll actually go to the actual Oregon Trail. That's about 2,100 miles, and they'll drive a car that goes from Independence, Missouri, all the way out to Bend, Oregon. This isn't the kind of car that you and I drive. Take a look at Georgia Tech's solar car. For us, the name of the game is efficiency. It's all powered on the sun. You have a fixed amount of energy coming in, so it's all about how you use that. We collaborate with R&D labs around the world to develop the most efficient technology possible and try and implement that in our vehicle, uh, get a maximum speed from that solar power. We cover our wheels for aerodynamics. We're shaped like an airfoil, much like the wing of a plane, so it can come through the air faster. Testing, testing, testing is how you make your car reliable, efficient, and fast. We're going to be taking her out onto public roads. We'll have a setup where we're actually taking data before G, and we'll watch the car's performance as it races and communicate with the drivers. Here's how you need to drive. Here's how fast you need to go to conserve the energy that you have in the pack. We are set to race nearly 2,000 miles this summer along the historic Oregon Trail. There are about 50 other teams in the country that we will be competing against uh, over nine days. For us, this is really an opportunity for our students to get real-world design, engineering, and leadership experience. We're completely student-run. 
We raise all of our own money. Uh, we design all of our own parts and build it all from the ground up. We've got people going to Tesla, SpaceX, and improving systems there with what we've learned working on this car. All right, so here is Brian Quo, who's actually a former electrical lead on the solar car. Uh, what are the emotions like as you get ready to drive something that isn't powered by gas, you know, uh, halfway across the country? So it's um, the, being in a competition environment, it's a, it's a great experience, you know, working with uh, so many great engineers from Georgia Tech. And it's, uh, it's a little unnerving at times, uh, building or uh, driving in something that you help to build. But it's a, it's a great experience, you know, knowing how electric cars work and specifically solar cars. So um, it's, I've learned so much from both uh, competition teams and uh, in the classroom. So. How does it work? This is a dumb question, but for those who don't know, how does it work when it gets cloudy? How does it work? So uh, we get this question a lot, actually. So what happens uh, when it gets cloudy is we actually have an onboard battery pack. We use a bunch of uh, lithium ion batteries that uh, store energy. And that's, you know, if it rains or if it's, uh, if it's getting to nighttime, and we charge that battery pack up. And depending on, um, depending on how we want to use that energy, it's all up to us. That's the strategy of our race. So Let's switch gears for a second. Because when he got his degree two years ago in ECE as an undergrad, you had a cool mortar board. You yes, put, I did. And we're going to take a little bit at a look at that video. But what was on top of your head? And, and why did you choose to do that? Uh, what was on top of my head? So I had a, um, I had a microcontroller running like a, a 32 by 32 um, RGB LED uh, matrix. So like those um, those segments of screen you see in Times Square. And yeah, I took one of those and put it on top of my grad cap. And uh, see like football highlights exactly, and solar exactly. car. So um, I was a part of uh, many different organizations here at Georgia Tech. I was in um, the marching band and of course uh, solar racing, which we talked about. But uh, I wanted to represent like all my my favorite memories at the school, and I've you know I've had the time of my life here. So I wanted to you know say thanks to my mom and dad, and say thanks to all the people who, uh, who had an influence on me. For the record, his mortarboard has nothing on top of it now, and your mortarboard. I, I, I knew I could yeah. not do myself. And where is it now, that mortarboard? Um, I I've actually donated it to the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta, so it uh, it's on display there. Brian Quo. All right, thank you so much. Thank Congratulations. Uh, we're gonna step out just so that you can kind of take a peek and. Uh, this is Valerie Montgomery. She will give the commencement address. She is the dean of the School of Medicine at Morehouse College here in Atlanta. Um, she also is a Georgia Tech graduate, and she is standing next to our president, President Bud Peterson. And President Peterson likes to bring the commencement speakers down here to kind of address the students as they get ready for the top of the hour. We'll walk over here and talk to Stephen, who uh, we just talked about the mortar boards with Brian. Do you have any mortar boards that can beat some LED screens? Thank you. Um, I think so. Now, now you know, uh, we've, I'm sure we've got some tough judges out there in McCamish, but as we're hearing uh, uh, Dr. Peterson wrapping up in the back, I'm going to pull in Kate and Alex. We're going to have a little mortar board competition here. And I think, uh, you know, uh, you, considering, Alex, you're an industrial design student, you sort of you sort of phoned it in a little bit on this one, didn't you? It's not so much phoning it in as uh, phoning it up the last minute. It's Georgia Tech. You had a lot of work to do, and so printing off a couple emojis, that's like, that's the most you can do, right? It's 2018. There you go. And so why these two emojis? Um, it's just sort of like encapsulates all the emotions I'm feeling after the last 24 hours, getting all the stuff in. Uh, yeah, feeling good. I'm hoping those are happy tears. They are happy tears. Very happy <laughs> tears because you got a degree from Georgia Tech. All right, we're going to let Alex go get uh, go get back in line, but we're going to talk to Kate here. You might, If you follow Georgia Tech's Instagram, you see an, a great photo of Kate with her mortar board. Um, also, no surprise, you're an aerospace engineering master's graduate. Yep, I am. <laughs> and um, if we can do this, uh, actually, we're going to zoom in on her watch because her mom actually sent her a message. And what did your mom say? She said, go by the guy with the microphone and suit with a yellowish shirt. She wanted me to be on camera, I guess. <laughs> so you, you now can give your mom a shout out, right? Yep. Hi, mom. Jolene Gunderson. <laughs> Hi, Jolene. Your, your, your daughter is on camera like you asked her to. She, she uh, has done what, has she, what she said. Your mom is definitely proud because I'm guessing you're headed to NASA next. Yep, I am. Johnson Space Center at the end of the month. No big deal, right? Are you looking forward to it? Oh, yeah. It's a dream come right. true for sure. All right. That's, uh, when you see this NASA mortar board crossing the stage, give Kate a good shout out. All right. Kate's got to go get back in line. Thank Congratulations. You. All right, as uh, Buzz is uh, warming up the graduates out here, looking good, um, we'll getting get excited Rice here. We will. And we're going to talk to Dr. Rice, uh, our commencement speaker, who is introducing herself to some graduates. Actually, she's stepping in right now. Dr. Rice, it's a pleasure to meet you. Georgia Tech graduate, does it feel good to be back on campus? 
You know, when you look back over your life and you think about all the things that you would have accomplished, never once did I think that I would be asked to give a commencement speech at Georgia Tech. When I was here, I was like, I just gotta go, just gotta go. But it really did prepare me for what was next, and I wouldn't trade the experience for anything in the world. I look forward to coming back for homecoming, and I'm just so honored that you all would think enough of me to give me the opportunity to share a couple of words. So thank you very much. Well, I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Blazing a, a trail as the first female to lead the Morehouse School of Medicine, what is your advice going to be to today's graduates? A little bit of a taste of what you're gonna say. I'm going to talk to them about mastering the middle. How do they really look at when you're in between, how do you make that decision to go forward with confidence and understand that you are the master of your fate? I am looking forward to that. All right, All right. busy lady, she's got to go get ready for this speech. I do, I do. I have to go put that wonderful warm gown on. All yes. right. All right. Thank Enjoy. You. Thank, All you. Right. Thank you. All right, so we're going to keep moving forward. Bryce is over in McCamish. He's got a little bit more excitement for you, something that happened uh, uh, earlier on, really sort of uh, a memory that a lot of Georgia Tech students that are going to be crossing the stage will remember as one of their favorite moments during their time here. Thank you very much, Stephen. A lot of memories being made today, and we have to turn back the clock to 2015. You know, some of you might consider it a minor miracle that maybe your friend or a family member and your graduate is walking across the stage today. We can all appreciate that. Georgia Tech is very tough, but we have a couple of big miracles in our history on the football gridiron. Let's look back at October 24th, 2015, the miracle on Techwood Drive. <laughs> to remain unbeaten this will come back to me. and perhaps a player in the college football playoff and the 29th consecutive conference win. Blocked, snuffed, rubbed out, erased. And Georgia Tech with an opportunity. Austin still on his feet. One man, you can't believe what just happened. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. What a time to be at Georgia Tech. However, there was one member of the Georgia Tech football program. That was one of the only years that he wasn't a part of the Yellow Jackets program, and that is Tevin Washington. He was the quarterback from 2009 to 2012, one of the top statistical quarterbacks of all time in Yellow Jacket history, and today he's getting his master's. Let's take a look at this Wetumpka, Alabama native who is white and gold through and through. I played football here, graduated in 2012, undergraduate from the College of Business and Management. So Georgia Tech has uh, been a part of my life for about 10 years now. My junior year, comes in was number five in the country. And you know, they came in and Bobby died undefeated. They left Bobby died with one loss. That was uh, the, probably was the, the highest moment in football for me here. Not a, not a better feeling in the world, you know, as a 21 year old, kid, you know, you play football your whole life for that feeling. So that was the, I know, I remember that feeling like it was yesterday. My next steps after graduation, I went and worked two years at at and That was fulfilling in itself, you know, being able to run a business, but I wanted more for myself, specifically on building construction. My family has a, has a lot of uh, rental properties that we own back in Wetumpka, Alabama. It's kind of a family tradition that we have. One thing about Atlanta and Georgia Tech is they're always building. So something's always getting built. Uh, when I was working in corporate America, I missed the team aspect of uh, being around guys that were all all in on the same goal as I was. Everybody committed, everybody you know, focused and honed in on, on one common goal. 2016, I came back as a, as a graduate assistant coach. I did two years working with the quarterbacks and the running backs. And I recently got promoted to uh, associate director of uh, football player personnel. How much harder is it, you know, going back uh, 
trying to get a master's at Georgia Tech versus undergrad. The one thing I will say is you have more time to devote to studying and your commitment to athletics is not the same as when you're a student athlete, you're kind of getting pulled both directions from your sport and also academics at the same time and Georgia Tech at the same time because Georgia Tech is by far one of the most challenging uh, places that you could go to school. I really never thought I would get a master's degree, to be honest. When I finished in 2012, the young-minded person that I was at the time, never going back to school. I made it out of Georgia Tech. Uh, I was done with school. I had, I had done enough. But being out of it for about a year, I realized that, you know, I kind of missed it. I missed, you know, the staying up late, studying, and the feeling of knowing that I'm, I'm better in myself and that I'm challenging myself and I'm learning. I miss the feeling of learning. Well, here's the man of 2012 and, and the man of the hour. Tevin, uh, what's it like to be back here five years later, no, six years later, and getting another degree? Uh, truly a blessing from God. Uh, without God, I don't think you know, any of this would be possible, but it allows me to further myself in my career and further my education, so I'm excited. Long term, you said you'd like to be an athletic director. Um, at a university with a building construction and facility management degree. How does that help you towards that goal? It helps me tremendously. Um, getting the knowledge of the construction industry, um, athletic directors, they focus on facilities on campus and bringing new facilities to campus. So it puts me in a position to already have a background and a knowledge of the construction and the facilities management industry. When you left in 2012, did you think you'd be back here getting a master's degree? And did you think that after your master's degree, you'd continue working here at Georgia Tech? It's kind of all fell in place for me. Uh, like I said, it's been a blessing from God. It all worked itself out where I'm in a position to do, you know, to, to obtain my master's as well as, you know, on the same, on the same token, be at my alma mater. Uh, you know this guy behind us? What's up, Buzz? <laughs> uh, one final question. You don't miss football, do you? Only thing I miss about it is the adrenaline, the adrenaline pump of playing. You don't but miss the getting hit and everything. I don't miss getting hit, not at all. I actually like, you know, being on the administration, administrative side and the coaching side now. So I'm passionate about that every day. Go ahead and look in the camera and say hello to whoever's here to see you. Hey mom, hey dad, hey Britton Rain, Brittany, Grandma, Adrian and Audrey and Logan. Love you guys. Yeah, uh, look at the side of his face. He's growing this out. He's getting married this summer, so uh, good luck with the uh, beard. Good luck with the wedding. Thank you. If it doesn't come in, I'm clean shaven. All right, as long as you still get married. Yes, sir. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. All right, Tevin Washington, former football player, now a master's degree recipient. Come on in here. We're going to uh, we're getting close to uh, the top of the hour. This is one of my favorite people on campus, a professor in Earth and Atmospheric Sciences. Kim Cobb, you're not doing coral research today. No. What's this experience been like for you as you volunteer and get these students in line? Well, obviously, it's, it's incredibly inspiring. I mean, these are people who are fresh from their degrees just today. Um, oh, I get a round of applause. Hello. Uh, they're, they're all inspiring, so much energy in this room, so much capacity to change the world. I am deeply humbled, actually, today to see all these folks lined up. What is it like when you go out and they learn that you're from Georgia Tech and they meet your students? My question, I guess, is what kind of value does the Georgia Tech name bring when it comes to credibility in research? It, it goes so far. I mean, not just here in Georgia, but all over the nation, all over the world. So anytime, anytime you go anywhere in Georgia, people say, oh, my, my daughter went there, my son went there, my dad went there, my mom went there. Um, and when you go outside Georgia, you say, oh, Georgia Tech, wow, that's, that's an incredible institution. And you, you must be very blessed and happy to be there. And I say, indeed, I am. And I know from my students' careers that they've just had doors and doors and doors and doors open for them on the basis of their education here at Georgia Tech. So, um, I don't know what these students know, what their future will bring, but I know it'll be very bright. Awesome. All right, Kim Cobb is a professor in the School of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences and a volunteer today, right? Yes, volunteering to line these bright folks up and keep them in line for their last duty to this institution. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Bye. All right, so we'll step out once again to kind of set the scene for you. Steven's got one more student we're going to talk to. This is where everybody lines up. We're coming up on the top of the hour, and we're almost there, but it looks like you've snuck in one more interview. I was sneaking in one because I don't know if you heard this in the background, but there was a rousing chorus of happy birthday for this young man. Uh, Nick, you're graduating with your MBA, and it's also your birthday. Yep, it's my uh, 30th birthday, and can't ask for a better day. 30 years young. Are you celebrating graduation and birthday together a little bit later on? Yep, yep. 
later tonight. It'll yeah. be a lot of fun. And is anybody waiting over in McCamish to help you celebrate? Yeah, my uh, mom, my dad, and my girlfriend, Jess. All right. How are you feeling with an MB MBA degree about to be in hand? Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I've already got my job lined up. I'm working there now, and it's been great. All right. All right. Excited. Birthday birthday boy Nick here we're gonna let him get back in line all right, all right. congratulations we're wrapping up here from from Zelnak everybody's getting lined up now these students are about to kind of make their way over towards the gallows underneath McCamish they'll get lined up and ready to process in and we're gonna head over into McCamish to keep things going from there yeah before we throw it out to Bryce let's just run down some numbers so actually this is the second ceremony of the day the doctoral ceremony was this morning 180 degrees were conferred in fact they're tired of seeing us. We'll step out so maybe some folks can, can see some of their peeps. Uh, 1,300, and, 1300 master's degrees will be conferred. And then tomorrow there's a ceremony at 9 in the morning for undergrads and then 1 in the afternoon at 3 o'clock. And 2,100 degrees go out then. So overall for the weekend in the four ceremonies, 3,470. This is the 255th commencement here at Georgia Tech and they just keep getting better and better. And so that is commencement live from back here in Zelnak. We are gonna throw it out to our man in McCamish, Bryce Zimmerman, and we will come out and see him as we inch closer to commencement. Go ahead, Bryce. Thank you very much, Jason, Stephen. You guys will be down here in just a little bit. You know, Georgia Tech is 130 years old, which means this institute is rich with tradition. First year students, not to touch the wreck. That means bad news when we play the University of Georgia. Rat caps, always very important. And if you have a keen eye, you might notice a few consonant letters missing all around campus. Well, there's lots of traditions that have been here for years and years and years, but there's also room for new traditions. In 2017, the Student Alumni Association introduced the Ramblin' Wreck Ring Ride. Now, you might be asking, what is the Ramblin' Wreck Ring Ride? Well, that is every single class ring going out to the 2018 graduating class has been on a ride in the Ramblin' Wreck. It happened just a few weeks ago. It was about a 15-minute spring jaunt around campus. Let's hop in and ride with the Ramblin' Wreck. Hey, Mom and Dad, thank you so much for supporting me through five years and two degrees at Georgia Tech. I'm so excited for today, and I just want to thank everyone that's been a part of my journey here at Georgia Tech, my parents, my advisor, my friends here and back home in Qatar, as well as the Energy Club at Georgia Tech. Go Jackets! Hi, Mom and Dad, my family and my friends. Thank you so much for coming here to watch me graduate from Georgia Tech. I really do not have much words to express my appreciation to you for doing everything possible for me. I'm super excited to be graduating today. Congratulations to the entire class of 2018. Go Jackets! From the graduates of 2018, thank you to the Georgia Tech Catholic Center. And to Father Josh for his sarcasm. Hell of a Catholic, hell of an engineer! Very happy I'm wearing this shirt today. Everyone is loving it. And thank you, Georgia Tech, for making me what I am today. And thank you, Mom and Dad. Thank you, my family. I think I'm more mature than I was before coming to Tech. And a great shout out to everyone who was part of me and my life in Tech. Go Jackets! Woo! 
Okay, I wanted to say thanks to God for giving me guidance and strength, uh, to my parents uh, for having faith in me, and to my friends for being here in the hardest moments. Thank you very much. So my favorite memory at Georgia Tech would be basically running after the buses every day. When I miss a bus, then I run after it. I mean, that would be my most memorable thing that I'll look back to. And I would like to thank my organization, which is Pakistan Student Association. That's my family in Atlanta. Probably no one would be coming from my country, but I'm very much thankful to them. And go Jackets! I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, and my brother COVID uh, for always supporting me. And uh, can't wait to have finally be done with uh, my masters. Thank you. All right, we are joining you out here now in McCamish. Everybody excited, ready to see your graduates cross the stage? Can we hear it? Can we hear y'all? That's pretty good. This actually happened a couple years ago and nobody cheered and I felt really upset. So it's good to hear from y'all. Jason, can you talk a little bit about uh, if families, friends want to know where students are going to be lined up, uh, where they need to be looking? Give me that mic. Sure. Yeah, so one of the questions we get asked is where will my child or my, my loved one be seated? I can't tell you exactly in which seat they're going to be seated, but Leland, come with me. We'll, and we have other cameras in here, so you can watch up on the big board or you can watch me. The thing is, people sit according to the colleges, and we line them up according to how new the colleges were established here at Georgia Tech. So down here in these seats, this first section from that first row to somewhere back here will be our College of Computing. And then beyond our College of Computing, will be the Ivan Allen College of Liberal Arts, and then after that will be our College of Design. Now here in the back, we'll start our Scheller College of Business, but that's probably where they'll start spilling over. So the Scheller College of Business students will also be right here in these first few rows, and then the College of Sciences come to, I don't know, somewhere here, and you're gonna see a big old chunk of engineering students that go back here. Here's a tip that I don't think your students want. Yeah, the College of Engineering, is that why we're clapping? The love is strong here at Georgia Tech. Here's a tip your students won't tell you. If they're seated in the back, they could be any major. The reason they're sitting in the back is because they arrived late and they aren't in their proper order. So don't get mad and don't think that Georgia Tech, an engineering school, doesn't have it act in order when people are just randomly called. Blame your kid, because your kid was late. Um, there is a man coming up here, Zvi Galil, our dean of the College of Computing. Uh, do you want to interview him or do you want me to interview him? Uh, well, before we do that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you do this while Zvi gets ready. Well, I'm going to walk up here and I'm going to show you guys where you might want to be watching in case you want to get kind of the best picture. So what's going to happen is the graduates are going to line up along this side. They're going to walk down this way. They'll wait here. And then something really cool that happens up here. Every graduate has a pre-produced card. It has their name on it. They've called in ahead to a hotline where they can pre-record what their name is pronounced like. We had a professional linguist actually record every graduate's name. They hand a card right here. 
you'll see someone here actually scanning a barcode, and then that professional linguist is actually reading every person's name. And that's really cool. We want to make sure everybody's name is pronounced correctly. Everybody gets their moment, and that's really important for us. A lot of colleges don't do that anymore, but every Georgia Tech graduate has their own individual moment, and that's really important to us. So they're going to cross the stage this way. They'll likely meet their dean uh, of the college they're graduating from somewhere in this area. They'll meet the president and shake his hand here. Then they're going to cross the stage over this way for that fantastic photo op right here with their diploma in hand, and then they'll exit this way. So that way you know kind of the area where they'll be at if you want to be watching uh, for your graduate. Now, I'm going to walk back here so Jason can talk to Zvi Galil, the dean of Georgia Tech's College of Computing, a lot of graduates from the College of Computing. Yeah, if you want a character here on campus, this is the man, Zvi Galil. So before we dive into this, Bryce talked earlier about our online computer science. There are so many college of computing graduates because so many of them can go online. I know that is a big source of pride for you. What is that like to see these numbers just continue to grow all over the world? Uh, it's simply am amazing. Uh, the on-campus program is one of the best. The online program is the largest, and it was the largest when it was half its size in the US and probably the world. We don't know everything that happens in India and China. So it's really a pleasure to see so many of them uh, here today. Some of them, most of them for the first time on campus. Yeah, so that you can go totally online, get your degree for less than $7,000, and the first time you're on campus is for graduation ceremonies. Let me ask you another question. Here at Georgia Tech, we don't wear red and black, but every commencement you walk out in these garbage colors. Tell me this is not for the school down the road. So we all have to wear the gown from our PhD. I took my PhD at Cornell. This, is, this gown belonged to Cornell and to hell with Georgia. <laughs> Zvi Galil, the Dean of the College of Computing, we're ready. It's time to start commencements. Uh, I would ask you if you want to say anything else, but you just said to hell with Georgia. That's good enough for us. At Georgia Tech, we create the next. Congratulations, everyone. Commencement 255 begins right now.